so much for being in the Lord's house today. I want to, uh, John and I just want to get the sort of started with a little prelude there. His next Sunday, it's his last Sunday, and we have been playing together, don't we, John? So, right. looking forward to uh, get to celebrate next Sunday with John as he heads off to college, a big part of his life. And next Sunday, too, is our uh, prayer for all students and teachers. So, we'll. We'll take some time next Sunday and have a time of prayer for all the school staff and all the teachers. It's college students like John heading off as well. So well, that'll be next Sunday morning. Hey, it's been a great morning already. Uh, something happened just a minute ago that normally doesn't happen before a service. Usually it's in the invitation time. Somebody comes forward and asks Jesus into their heart. But just about five minutes ago, I got to pray with a young man here in the sanctuary who asked Jesus into his heart. in that simple faith of a child that they have to believe. We as adults, our minds get cluttered and, 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 and busy with the things of this world. And may we have the mind of Christ and, and the mind of the child with simplicity just to believe the truth of your word. And Father, we pray that you would clear our minds this morning and open our hearts to receive the word that you would speak to us today. Father, you're so good. And we're so thankful that you love us like you do. Pour out your spirit now on this place today as we worship you in spirit and truth. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And amen. 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 It is good to see everybody here this morning. It's been hot. I, I tell you, but you know, it's cool in here. We had two units come down over this past week. And the guys jumped on it. Uh, that We have it work on it. And they got it all fixed. They got a new unit replaced. Sometimes you just got to do that. Unit they replaced with 27 year olds. So it done its due, so it was tired, and we just put it to rest. So it's uh, it's done. So uh, Mark went on vacation. He came back, and I don't I don't know. I think Mark, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 well, it's a little better than Mark. I just got it in the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I just got a video from Mark. Mark's up in a helicopter. They got a bunch of lines down from where they had the storm yesterday. So uh, he told me he hadn't gotten much sleep. So he uh, he was trying to get over Clinch Mountain. So uh, I just made sure he wasn't the one flying. He said he wasn't. So, but uh, but we're uh, praying for his safety as he's out there uh, trying to get people back with power and stuff. Uh, when you lose internet, that's terrible. So uh, lines coming to an end for these kids, you know. So. But, uh, but we're so glad, you know, Harley's a good example of someone that's wanting to work. And uh, he just, whatever, he comes into back there. And uh, it meant a lot. But he said, I just, want to, I just want to fit in. I just want to serve my Lord. I want to serve this church. You know, we all should have that. Uh, we should all have that feeling in our heart to get into a church, get plugged in, and just start doing it. You know, that doesn't matter if it's good, bad. 
ugly or, or indifferent. If you're doing it for the Lord, it's all matters. Right. Right. Everybody this is stand. A wonderful church. Everybody stand. Let's sing this old song. This next song, it's an old song, we've sung it many, many times. We've sung it, I guess, in the faith. And it's got a lot of meaning. It's a, you know, a lot of these old songs do have a lot of meaning. It's, you just listen to the words. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we've not been, a, I, know, I know myself, I've not always been the best that I could be growing up. I've, always, I've had times that I'm embarrassed to even talk about. But, uh, you know, he loved me. He died on the cross for me. He saved my soul. And he, he saved me from a burning head. And uh, you know, there's nothing I can do to repay him. He done it all. He done it all. 
His next song is the calls he loved me.
Let's say that one more time. We don't even have to do it. At the cross. Sweet. 
Test scores are going home. Some students are going to bring home test scores of mastery. And some are going to bring home low test scores. Some teachers are going to get the scores of their classes. And some teachers' class scores are going to be great. And others are going to be not so good no matter how hard they worked. Maybe if you're in high school, your, your friends make the sports team, but you don't. Your friend make the homecoming court, but not you. Or adults, your coworker gets that promotion you wanted, and you're stuck in the same position. Or maybe your adult siblings have high-paying jobs, and you're just barely scraping by. Sure, we can all feel significant, insignificant rather. We can even feel worthless at times. And today, if you are feeling worthless, I want you to be encouraged by the Word of God. My prayer for you today is that you would see that you are not worthless, but you're priceless. You are priceless. You see, worthless means of useless and of no value at all. If you're worthless, you're of no value. And priceless means too valuable or too high in value to attain, to attach a price to. You can't even name it because it's so so worth so worth so much. And I want you to know today you are priceless. You may not feel that way right now, but you're priceless and we'll find out why in just a moment. But let's pray and let's see what God has to say about that. Heavenly Father, again we thank you for the time of worship we had. We thank you that you paid all for us and so we owe you our all. Because of what you were willing to pay for us with your very blood, we're going to find out this morning how worthy, how much we are worth to you. So speak to us now. And if there's anybody here discouraged this morning, if there's anybody in this place who feels worthless, Lord, would you encourage them today through your Holy Spirit and remind them of just how valuable they are to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So why was it that that painting faced with carnations, why did its price rise so much? Well, it was because of who painted it, right? Listen, the, the outline is short and simple today. You've seen it. It would be a little shorter message than usual today, probably. But that's the way I wanted it. I just wanted to give you some simple truths this morning. And the first thing I want you to see is this. Number one on your outline, your worth is based on who created you. Your worth is based on who created you. A painting by Vincent Van Gogh is worth millions. But you have even a better creator. You were made by the same hands that placed the very stars in the sky. You were made by the same hands that carved the Grand Canyon and formed the beautiful Smoky Mountains. Your worth is based on who created you, and you were created by God. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 there, verse 10. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You are the workmanship of God. When you look in the mirror, don't see a worthless individual. See the workmanship of God because God formed you God created you. Psalm 139, 13 through 16 reminds us of this also. Psalm 139, verse 13, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they are all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Isn't that an awesome thought this morning? That God formed you, and before you were ever formed, He knew you. He knew you, and He knew what lie ahead in your life before He ever created you. Has anyone ever called you worthless? Maybe they have. Maybe somebody's got angry at you and said, you're worthless. You're pitiful. You're worthless. But verse 14 cuts down that lie there. Verse 14 says, marvelous are your works. And remember, you're the workmanship of God. So I want you to turn to your neighbor this morning and tell him, 
your marvelous, simply marvelous. <laughs> Tell somebody else to say, you're marvelous, simply marvelous. <laughs> Listen, church, you are not worthless. You are not insignificant. You are not useless. You're not ugly. You're not dumb. You're not whatever we can fill in the blank there. You're not that. You're not whatever lie that somebody has called you. You are marvelous. You are wonderfully created. And you are priceless because of who created you. The Lord created you. And he knows that you are marvelous. And he created you with that in mind that you are wonderful. And you are marvelous. And he's got great things for you in your life to do for him. That's what Ephesians 2.10 said, remember? Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Why? Not without purpose. But for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. That means God already had a plan for your life. God already had a purpose for your life when he created you. And he says, walk in it. Do it. Do what I've created you to do. Find that purpose that I've given you in your life. You are wonderful. You are awesome. You are amazing. And find the purpose that I've created you for and walk in it. Do it. Live it in your life. God knew you were not useless. He created you to do good works, great things for him that he'd already prepared for you in your life. So get up out of the corner, dust yourself off, and put yourself on display for Jesus. Yeah. Let others see your good works that they might glorify God. Begin doing those things that God created you to do. You're in su you are such an important, <coughs> important workmanship of God that he paid special attention to every minute detail about you when he created you. Everything he paid special attention to. Jesus tells us in Matthew 10, 30, just about how much God cares about what seems insignificant to us. Jesus <coughs> said there that God knows the very hairs of your head, that they're all numbered. Some of you are easier to count than others. But he knows that he's the number of hairs on your head. You mean that much? To your creator. That's how much you mean to God. Even those little minute things. So in the circumstances of life. Have you feeling worthless? You remember this. Your worth is based. On who created you. And you are created. By the creator. The great I am. You're created by God almighty. There's another way to measure what you're worth. Though. Number two on your outline. Your worth is based. On how much someone is willing to pay for you. Your worth is based on how much someone is willing to pay for you. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. People will pay some crazy prices for some crazy things, won't they? In 2017, there was a, a diamond known as the Pink Star. It sold in Sotheby's of Hong Kong to a company. They bought that little rock. For $71.2 million. A sealed copy, those you gamers out there, a sealed copy of the Super Mario 64 game, it's 25 years old now, just sold for $1,560,000 earlier this year. You know who Justin Bieber is, right? He sold some of his hair for an auction. It was sold for $40,668 for a piece of Justin Bieber's hair. How about $3.2 million for a dog collar, a diamond studded dog collar? Would you pay that for a dog collar? These things sold for an exuberant amount of money because somebody was willing to pay that much for them and raise their worth. You know, if we go back to the painting that I mentioned earlier, Vase with Carnations, if you added up what it was actually worth in materials, if you added up the cost of the canvas and the cost of the frame and the cost of the paint, it wouldn't be anywhere near a million dollars, would it? But that's not how its worth is determined. Its worth was determined by how much somebody was willing to pay for it. And you may be thinking, well, what's that got to do with me? I want to remind you that somebody was willing to pay a high price for you. 
1 Corinthians 6.20 says that you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You were bought with a price. What was the price paid for you? Don't miss this. The price that was paid for you is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the Son of God. Look there at 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. It reminds us of this. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. <coughs> Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Here's what bought you. Here's what redeemed you. 19, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. How much was someone willing to pay for you to determine your worth? Well, Jesus paid with his life. Not with silver, not with gold, but by the very blood of the Son of God. That's how much you're worth this morning. Don't look in the mirror and feel worthless. Don't feel insignificant. You are worth Jesus Christ coming from heaven to earth, dying on the cross, and shedding his blood for you. That's what you're worth today. You are priceless because nothing could ever be worth more than the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, priceless means too valuable or too high in value that you can't, cannot attach a price. And you can't attach a price to the blood of Jesus. It's too valuable. But I can't tell you what it bought this one. It bought your forgiveness. Right, Briar? Briar? Bought your forgiveness. He asked the Lord to forgive him. It bought your salvation. It bought your eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 tells us and reminds us that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. What is corruption? That describes you and I in our sin. When I talked to Briar a minute ago, I said, have you sinned? And, and, and he thought of some sins in just a minute. He thought of some sins. Yeah, he lied. Yeah, he didn't clean his room and mom and dad told him to. He did some sins. He did some things that he wasn't supposed to do. We're all sinners. We all, and I told him, mom and dad and me too, have all sin. We all fall short of the qualifications for entering heaven. We're all corrupted by our sin. And corruption cannot inherit incorruption according to the word of God. That means you and I, our sinful state, will never, ever get into heaven if we don't do something about it. And God's word tells us, listen, it, God's word tells us, that if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself, and the truth is not in you. So if you're sitting there this morning thinking, well, this message isn't for me. I'm not sin. You're wrong. You have. And corruption doesn't hit, inherit incorruption. That sin is going to keep you out of heaven. But listen, don't start thinking poorly of yourself because you sin. God didn't think any less of you. As a matter of fact, because you sin. God showed his love to you. That's what Romans 5, 8 says. Romans 5, 8 says God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the love of God. Knowing that we are at fault for putting his son on the cross, they would have to die and shed his blood for us. Even though God knew every sin that you would ever commit, some of you would be embarrassed to even talk about it. God knew every sin that you would ever commit. He knew it. He saw it. And he said, because of it, I'm going to send my son to die in their place. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that brings us right back to the place of the price that was willing to be paid for you. 1 Peter 1.19, we read, you were redeemed by the blood of Christ. But what does it mean to be redeemed? What does redeemed mean? If you look it up, you'll find these definitions. The first one is this. To compensate for the faults or the bad aspects of something. To compensate for the faults or the bad aspects of something. So Jesus compensated for our faults. That's our sin as he died on the cross shedding his blood. And we don't want to forget the end of 1 Peter 1, 19. The end of that verse says, with the precious blood of Christ, and think about Christ, it says, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. That was why Christ was able to compensate for us. We couldn't have died for ourselves because we are not, we have sin. It took a spotless, sinless, faultless lamb to shed his blood. And that was Jesus 
Because Jesus never said he was without blemish, he was without spot, so he could compensate for our faults. So his sinlessness compensated for our sinfulness. His perfection compensated for our problem. His righteousness compensated for our reproach. His goodness compensated for our disgrace. His glory compensated for our guilt. His offering compensated for our offense. So we ought to be giving him praise today, amen, because he did that. We are redeemed because of his sinless, surrendered life that he gave up on Calvary's cross. He made compensation for our faults. Another definition of redeemed is this, to gain or regain possession of something in exchange for a payment. We've already talked about that payment, haven't we? The blood of Christ. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2 with me. I want you to see this. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. Thinking about this definition of redeemed, this verse gives a good example of what we were without when we were without Christ and what we have now that we have him for those of us who have Jesus in our heart. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. It says that at that time, you were without Christ. That's before you were saved, before you placed your faith in Jesus as your Savior. At that time, you were without Christ. And so, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you once who were afar off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Yeah. You see, you weren't part of the family of God before the blood of Jesus was applied to your life. Ephesians, 12, verse 12, Ephesians 2 verse 12 there says that to be without Jesus is to be these three things. First it says you're a stranger to God's promises. That means that promise of heaven doesn't apply to you. That promise of eternal life is not yours if you're without Jesus. It says you're without hope. You have no hope because Jesus is our hope. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ and the fact that he rose again is our hope. We have a living hope, Peter tells us. But without Jesus, we're without hope. And thirdly, we're without God. It says there in verse 12, without God in this world. I don't want to be in this world without God. Do you? I'm, some days are hard with him. But with God, I can get by. With God... I can do all things because he strengthens me. Yeah. But to be without Christ is but to be without God in this world. I don't want to be without any of those things. I don't be, want to be without God's promises. I don't want to be without hope. I don't want to be without God. And we don't have to be because we can be redeemed. We can gain possession of God's promises. We can gain possession of the hope. We can gain possession of a relationship with God. And verse 13 there tells us how. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you once, you who once were far off, have been brought near. How? By the blood of Christ. Yes. That's the price that was paid for you. You who once were far off, sitting in the corner, feeling worthless, collecting dust, trying to live in your own strength. Trying to pay, be good enough to pay the price for your own sin. You ones who were far off, your worth has now been established as priceless because of the one who created you and because of the price that he was willing to pay for you. His blood. The Tally Trio sings a beautiful song. I know many of you know it. It's called The Broken Ones. It tells of a little girl named Maggie. And she digs an old doll out of her neighbor's trash can. The old doll's missing an arm. Its little button eye is just hanging by threads. But Maggie brought that little doll home, and she loved on it just as much as she did her fancy dolls. And over time, she began to patch that doll up and make it whole again. And then the second verse of the song goes to 20 years later. And 20 years later, a 17-year-old girl shows up at a shelter. She's beaten black and blue. She's got needle tracks in her left arm, and she's crying out for help. And she's come to the right person. She's going to come 
to the grown up Maggie who used to take care of little broken dolls. She's come to Maggie at the shelter and Maggie takes her hand and says, come on in. And then the chorus of the song goes like this. She, Maggie, she's just doing what the one who died for her would do, which is to love the broken ones, the ones that need a little patching up. She sees a diamond in the rough and she makes it shine like new. Amen. What Jesus did for us, isn't it? <clears throat> that old dusty painting sitting in the corner until we find out what we're worth. <laughs> Until we find out who created us. Better than Vincent Van Gogh. God Almighty. A painting collecting dust in a corner. A torn up baby doll in a trash can. A teenage runaway drug addict. To some, all of these seem worthless. But to the right person, they're worth so much. And you... You are priceless. You are priceless in the eyes of the Lord. Why? He created you. And he paid a high price for you. He gave his son so that you could be forgiven and have eternal life. The question for you is this today. Would you do what Briar did this morning? Would you, with the faith of a little child, believe that Jesus did that for you and that God loves you that much? When you feel insignificant, when you feel worthless, when you feel like a bad person, it's hard to believe that a God would love you that much. But I'm here to tell you this morning, He does. He does. Did Jesus love you enough to die for you? He did. Can you have eternal life and forgiveness? You can. How? Believing in the Son of God that He did this for you and receiving His grace and mercy into your life. He'll forgive you, set you free, and give you eternal life. Who would make that choice today to be saved? The praise team's going to come now. I'm going to step down here. And if you need to make a decision today, you've seen how much you're worth to God, I want you to come and let me pray with you. And today you can receive the salvation that's available because of the one who created you and because of the high price he was willing to pay for your soul. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us how much we are worth to you. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, of the price that you paid, were willing to pay for us. And Lord, I don't know if anybody in this place this morning is without you. But we read there in your word that to be without you is to be without those promises. To be without hope. To be without you by our side in this world. And if there's anybody who's without you this morning, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, draw them to yourself. That those who once were far off have now been brought near by the blood of Jesus. That they might come and begin that relationship with you today, Lord. You move in this place. And Father, perhaps there are some today who came in and when they walked into the sanctuary, they felt worthless because of situations and circumstances in their life. I don't know you've spoken to them today. Maybe they just need to come to this altar and thank you for loving them like you do. Lord, I don't know what all needs to happen during this time of invitation, but you do. So you have your free reign and your free will now. We turn this time over to you. Move as you need to move among this people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand this morning. And if you need to do any kind of business with the Lord, would you come? You speak with the Lord today. If I need to pray with you, I'll be glad to. If you need to join the church this morning, you come and join the church as they sing.
come here, praise me, stand up daily. I promise there ain't nothing I can do. Child, I'm here for you. sharing that with us, that truth that you wrote there, and I appreciate you sharing that. I know it meant a lot to you, Papa, too. And thank you each for being here today, and uh, uh, let's go over some quick announcements uh, before we dismiss this morning. Don't forget, tonight is our uh, baptism service out at Harrow Park, and like I said, I think we've got five or six or seven or eight, I'm not sure, depends on who all shows up to baptize this evening, so it's going to be a, a great time, but there's always a service. If you've not been to it before, there's a service out at the lake up in the pavilion is covered. We've got some big fans in there. And so we'll worship with other churches in our association. And we'll go down to the lake for the baptism. So that's what we're doing tonight. And then don't forget this Wednesday, there's no adult classes here, no adult activities. We're going to go out and help the kids with the back to school bash. And so I know they're excited about that. So that's this Wednesday evening at 6 30 and so be here for that and i'm sure if the ladies need any help specifically or need us to bring anything we'll get that on the phone tree we are asking that everybody comes that comes would bring a donation for the isaiah 117 house to the bash you ladies will send emails about that what kind of items we need i don't think they're here this morning carolyn do you is she here do you know for sure i know i was i was thinking <clears> myself it's just general things they need or it's just back to school things I think it's general. Thing. I, it's a it's a house for foster children, so I think it's. I would say anything is appropriate. I would say you're pretty safe. Whatever you bring, we'll make sure it gets to the, them, and I'm sure they could use anything. So that's this Wednesday. So bring your kids and come have a good time. And then don't forget, next Sunday is John's last Sunday with us. He's up here behind me. So and before he goes to Tennessee Tech, so we're doing a blessing basket for John. And so uh, if you'd like to bring him, him a gift card of some kind, and, uh, he'll, he'll take all kinds of money, the kind of jingles, but he prefers the kinds of folds. And so uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you'd like to bless him, he's been such a blessing to us. And, you know, he's, he's not paid to play piano up here, does it? He gets up early. He's here before Sunday school starts every Sunday. He's here practicing and with, with a praise team. And he does it because he loves the Lord and because he wants to serve this church. And so we're so thankful, John, for the many, many, months you bless us on the piano so we want to bless you as you <laughs> so that's next Sunday be sure to come bring something to bless John also next Sunday we'll have our day of prayer for students as I mentioned earlier in the service we'll have teachers and school staff pray for everybody and then don't forget on the back table back there are two sign up sheets one is for our new wednesday night small groups that are starting not this wednesday because it's the back to school bash but the next wednesday august the 9th and i saw several people have already signed up but if you've not signed up there's a description of the three adult small groups back there pick the one that you'd like to go to and sign up and that starts again in two weeks on august the 9th we hope to have a good crowd on that wednesday night as we start these small groups and uh, we're looking forward to getting this started in a couple weeks. Appreciate everybody that's got a leadership role in that. Our children are starting Bible drills. Our youth are starting a, a new study as well. And so I'm excited about everything that's going to be going on on Wednesday night. Also, there's some sign-up sign sheets. I only think there's about one spot left. If you'd like to sign up to be on the ministry team for the, for the uh, fellowships that we're going to have. I think there's a slot left for one of them. If you'd like to serve on the, the fellowship teams. Sign up for that. Then one more thing, we're going to do our food pantry distribution. The next one is August the 19th. That's at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's at, usually until around noon, but until we run out of food. So if you'd like to come, I know they've encouraged us to come and help be part of that blessing. It's to bless people with, with uh, food on August the 19th from 10 to about noon on that day. All right, anybody have uh, something on your heart, a testimony, or something Please God's spoken to you today that you just want to share before we dismiss? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you just um, pray for our daughter, she's in labor with her third child, and um, she had a new one, and they were transferred to the hospital. Okay. So, I don't know what you mean. Okay. All right. What's your daughter's name? Erin. 
Darian? Darian. Darian, okay. Darian. All right, we'll pray for Darian here in just a minute together. Anything else? All right. We want to tell you next Sunday, you don't want to miss, we're starting a new series called By the Word of Their Testimony. And beginning next Sunday and every Sunday in August, there's going to be, most of the time, a new member as part of my message sharing their testimony. And some of these testimonies, let me tell you, are powerful. I am looking forward to this series that will start next week. And I'm not going to tell you who's going to be speaking, who's going to be sharing the testimony. I'll let it be a surprise to you. But except for maybe one or two, you have never heard these testimonies, and they're going to blow your socks off uh, to see what God has done in people's lives. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's come next Sunday. Come expecting a blessing. Pray for this new series, and we'll pray that God moves in powerful ways. Well, let's pray and ask God to, to bless this service, and we'll pray for Darian as well this morning. Uh, Father, we just thank you for your blessings on this service. We thank you, Lord, that you've spoken to us, both in song, through your word. Lord, as we've declared your worth and how worthy you are of our praise, you've reminded us of our worth to you, that you should, sent your son to shed his blood for us because that's how much we mean to you, because that's how much you love us. We thank you for that. We pray for Darian now as she's going to the hospital in labor, whatever the situation may be, whatever the need is there, Lord, you know. We pray your hand of protection upon her during this delivery on the baby, upon the baby. Protect them, God, the doctors, Lord, that the next time we see Bill and Ginger, they'll be rejoicing with us in the birth of a grandchild. So, Father, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for that you're the fact that you're the great physician. So meet that need there, we pray today. And we pray these things again in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, 7 o'clock tonight, seven tonight out of Harold Park for baptism service. <laughs>